I'd like to introduce Kristen. So Kristen Calfee is a healthy lifestyle social media influencer and solo entrepreneur with a following on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, and the podcasting world. And she has an audience well over 250,000 strong. Kristen's fitness self-care brand, Luxleet, and personal brand, Health, Healthy Calfee, has allowed her to not only inspire women around the world to live a healthy and happy lifestyle, but also allowed her to commit to social media content curation full time. Uh, and I think I was supposed to say <laughs> for Cody's <laughs> or for the video people, uh, we are rolling now. So we have Chris. <laughs> yeah. So thank you guys so much for coming out here tonight. We have Kristen Calfee, our guest speaker. <laughs> and I even had that written in here to say beforehand. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, so without any further ado, thanks for coming out here tonight, Kristen. Thank you. Thank you for that introduction. <laughs> of course. So to start off, can you share a bit about your fitness journey with our audience? Yes. So um, I have personally lost 75 pounds in the course of a year. It was my freshman year of college and, um, you know, freshman 15 was like, <laughs> I came into like school already plus size, but then I gained even more weight. And um, I ended up developing symptoms of prediabetes and saw my health rapidly decline at uh, like I was 18, 19 years old. And so it was a New Year's resolution for me to get my health back. And because I had that health scare on top of it, I didn't really play any games. And um, I, I was in college for um, art education. Mm -hmm. um, I watched all of The Office and decided I can do business. <laughs> so I changed my major to marketing after watching The really? Office. Yes. <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> yep. And I was like, mm, simple enough. I'll do it. Um, and uh, basically, I took um, like a business 101 class and they told you about like envisioning your uh, success beforehand. It was this really interesting class that every freshman had to take. And uh, from there on out, I was like, well, if I said I can do it, I guess I'm just going to go ahead and do it. Um, and with some interest that I had in the past with uh, science, I went the scientific route. I never was like, how to lose weight quick. I was just like, <laughs> how to take care of a human being. Like, And so it was really straightforward. And uh, um, yeah, that's like a little bit about my fitness journey. I've been going okay. on strong ever since. So. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> okay. And was there a moment when you realized that you could take this journey to other people? Um, yes. People started asking, Kristen, how'd you do it? Just in real life and everyday life. Um, and uh, I was like, you know what would be really smart? If I can just like send them a link and just here's the link. <laughs> this is what I did. Um, and that's when I came up with the idea of my first platform that I ever created, which was my um, YouTube channel. Nice. And, yeah. And was that something, did you have any idea that this was something you wanted to do full time or was this just, I want to save time explaining this to all of these people that keep asking me how I did it? It was literally just like, it was for the most selfish reason ever. I was like, I'm tired of explaining it. I'm going to airdrop you this link. Um, <laughs> literally. And uh, I mean... I've always, I was an RA, just mm -hmm. like fun fact. I was an RA. I already was so used to building community and getting people together. I was an RA all four years of college. Like I was a freshman RA. How annoying would it be to have a <laughs> freshman check your dorm as a junior being like, this isn't supposed to be here. That was me. <laughs> um, that was me. Um, just because I had such a big personality and I wasn't as scared to like meet new people and connect people with other people. Mm -hmm. um, so it wasn't really difficult me for get on camera. I have like some other like fun facts about me on the camera. Yeah. You want to share some of those? Cause I know you do. <laughs> yeah. I'm not camera shy. I love it. I was on American Idol. Like I made it to Hollywood. That was my first flight ever. So I'm a singer. I was on stage. I did beauty pageants. And so like, it was just natural for me to be like, I can like definitely do like this on camera thing. Like <laughs> this is definitely my vibe. So it was, it felt natural at first, mm -hmm. especially cause it's a phone. Like that's like that like the bigger cameras are more intimidating like having a cameraman like follow you around with the big old camera is so much more intimidating than the little rinky dink iphone i'm like i have conversations on this all the time why can't i just i'm in my room by myself like who cares yeah. so that's how i kind of like saw it so it was like second nature for me to do it so yeah nice so it was kind of second nature for you to jump into this and yeah. just start heading down that path but definitely did not think i was going to do it full time i wanted to be an art teacher i wanted to be the kooky crazy art teacher that made like kids paint with their feet like I, I wanted to help people express themselves right um 
And then I was like, I want to do business corporate art. That's how I saw marketing. I was like, yes, business <laughs> art, flyers, billboards, like, so. Was there a moment when you made that switch? Was it after the office or was it at a different time? It was definitely after I finished um, <laughs> binge watching The Office during winter break. And okay. I was like, I think I could totally do business. Like, that'd be so fun. So I changed it. Not really knowing what marketing was, mind you. I just, I literally was like, business art. Flyer gets printed out. There's a print print shop in the art building. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah, kind of the <laughs> same vibe. They make t-shirts for events. Like, I can do this. Um, a little did I know I was going to, like, fall in love with, like, strategy and, like, you know, bell curves and all. <laughs> so. Could you tell us a tiny bit about how you made your leap from I want to do marketing to I want to do marketing for myself or social media? Yes. So uh, I come from a family of entrepreneurs. I feel mm -hmm. like I should say that first and foremost. My mom did um, event planning in New Orleans. Um, she used to decorate for like Essence Festival in New Orleans. She was very big at one point. The, uh, what is it called? I'm going to not say it right, but it's the guys with the golden sneakers and the socks. Uh, they have balls all the time, um, but she would decorate for them. Okay. Um, so, and then my dad was he built a uh, termite and pest control business. And so I came from that family of entrepreneurs and the best thing they ever told me was the best experience that you're going to get is doing it in real life, not just from the textbook. It's like applicable things stick with you more than just reading it. And so I was like, marketing, okay freshman year try to get an internship why not like let's just dive <laughs> right into it because I hear so many people say that there's I never have enough job experience when I graduate I need this many years of experience so I always tell like I told my other um residents in my hall I was like go get an internship right now just get the experience now you build up that experience before you leave while you're in college and broke and you don't have as many responsibilities and life's kind of easy right now so go out and get as much experience as you possibly can and so I applied the stuff I learned in marketing in real life via trying to get internet famous and it worked so before I even graduated college I had two full-time job offers um Dang. one for a marketing firm um it was uh I worked for Global Star as a social media intern. They have satellites. It's really cool, really interesting stuff. And then um, I ended up getting a um, offer from the Salad Station to be their marketing director, 22 years old, didn't even have the piece of paper in my hand yet. And I went, <laughs> I went the marketing director route because it seemed cool. And I was like, yeah, no one's above me but the CEO, let's do it. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> um, I went that route. And um, I worked there for about a year and social media ended up making more than my salary. And, you know, I did my three months notice because I am <laughs> That's a, a long great notice. employer and I hired my replacement before I left because I don't believe in burning bridges and I'm still in the health industry. So if I ever came back to Baton Rouge, which <laughs> I did, I can actually ask for like, you know, giveaways and yeah. stuff like that for my audience. Um, that was January 2020 that I did my three months notice, moved to Miami March 16th, 2020 and March 17th, the world shut down. <laughs> Stuck in Miami trying to be a personal trainer and ended up going full time online. And that's really when I, that's when like the entrepreneurship kicked in. Where are your resources? What are you going to do next? And I flourished. So I love it. Yeah. Now I'm here. <laughs> so let's dive in a bit more to social media. Yes. Um, so you are you're really good at this. I'm gonna I'm gonna say that for the audience, <laughs> so you don't have to. Um, so a while ago, you kind of blew my mind by telling me, and feel free to uh, correct me if I'm misparaphrasing this in any way, but that engaging with social media is a bit like throwing a party every day. Uh, would you care to elaborate on that? Yes. Again, my mom was an event planner, so like that party aspect just kind of is like ingrained in me. Um, so let's say, so I do fitness, mm -hmm. right? Easy fitness. Everyone's going to show up on my page looking to see the fitness party that I'm throwing every single day. I also use this as it akin to like Food Network. Like you're never going to see a NFL football game play on Food Network. You're going to go there. <laughs> you're expecting recipes, like themes, right? And I, I know like there's this really big thing that is so incorrect and it's always told by people that are so far ahead they're able to play in this kind of like fluffy ideology. But it's, um, you know, uh, don't put yourself in a box. On social media, put yourself in a box <laughs> because that is how everything is divvied up 
via algorithm. It's in verticals. So if you don't put yourself in a box, you're going to go nowhere. You're going to be in the rest of the cloud. So mm -hmm. I believe in throwing the party of your theme every single day. And I also said, remove yourself out of it. Um, uh, no one cares about your personal life. <laughs> I'm sorry, they don't. And that is the fact. If it has nothing to do with what you are trying to do at the party, don't bring it up. So if, I, if I'm going through a breakup and I want to talk about it or something like that on my social media account because, you know, I have some ego high and I'm like, oh, I have all these followers. They can listen to me. If it's not like a breakup workout routine, <laughs> I'm going to shut up. Right. Because it's not relevant. And if anything, it'll turn people off like mm, she's going through something. Mm, I'm going to follow real quick. Mm -hmm. So uh, no matter what your business vertical is, um, you have to stay on the party theme. People are showing up. You put that invitation out. You're sending it to them every single day you post. You're telling Instagram, this is the kind of party and it's going to go, okay, this is the kind of party that she throws. We're going to give it to people that are looking to join these kinds of parties. So <laughs> stay on your theme. So how would you respond to people who say things like you have a responsibility to use your platform for fill in the blank? Oh my gosh, yes. We saw that in 2020 when people started to say, you should be talking about this. Why aren't you talking about this? You need to be talking about this because if you're not talking about this, you're a bad person. And uh, at the time, it was very, very necessary just to say, okay, yes. But after that, people then thought that social media was the only... Social media then became a place where if you don't talk about every problem or issue in society, you kind of felt guilty for it. And you're like, I don't even know if I want to start a bunch of social medias. I literally had two other businesses running with my social media at the time. And I had to like give it a break because with all of the social responsibility being pushed on influencers and businesses mm -hmm. um, in 2020 with everything that was going on, I was so nervous that if I forgot to post about a certain topic on a certain platform, I would get canceled. So that was like a thing at one point. I think everything's kind of, the pendulum swung and I think now it's kind of swinging back to where things are a little bit more like you can speak on things and keep it relevant on topic. Um, but yeah, you don't feel obligated to speak on certain issues unless I always, this is my rule of thumb, unless you're going to actually donate money <laughs> or volunteer to do something about it. If not, don't bring it up. So. Okay, that's good. So you said yeah. those are the two exceptions. If you're going to actually, basically, if you're going to actually do something about it. Yeah, don't talk different. about something unless you are actually going to put action on it. If not, like, why are you bringing it up? Unless you're saying, okay, there's this issue in some um, country our company is going to donate this, that, and the other because it stands for these values mm -hmm. that we are also bringing to you through our product or service. That makes sense. Rather than you just, my opinion is this, post. <laughs> that so, makes sense. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's how I view it. So you can still have like social, because that, that matters. I think people want to see brands stand up for things, but not just say they stand up for things. I think we're kind of over the um, just activism to look like you're standing for something. Mm -hmm. People want to see you do things more than anything now. So, Less and I mean, it's good for more virtue singling. That's, yeah. that's the word for it. And I think it's even better for like, if you have like a LinkedIn account and stuff like that as well, to show you in action saying, hey, we're doing something um, as a brand, as a business, rather than just speaking on something because you feel obligated to speak your opinion because you have a platform. So that's good. Are yeah. the, so do you think the ways that individuals and businesses use social media, are those the same or is there a fundamental difference between those? Oh, it's completely different. Could you elaborate on that? In what way? Like, or I don't have a spam way. account. <laughs> I don't have a spam account. I don't use social media. Okay. I'm just going to be cut and dry. Social media is not ugh, because it's my full time job. I text the people that I care about. I don't look for people's accounts and check their stories. If I unfollow one of my friends, they know it's not personal. <laughs> they know it's not personal. If they're going through something and I'm on social media and I need to be focused on business and then I see my friend crying because of X, Y, Z, that's going to mess up my workflow. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's just like, I'm going to unfollow you. I'm going to text you and call you after I'm done answering DMs, doing what I have to do. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't mindlessly scroll. If you are going to have, I don't know, I, <laughs> whenever I really said I'm going to do this full time, that's when I told all my friends in my contact list, like, hey, 
you're going to see me post a lot on social media. You're going to see that little green bubble pop up and I'm going to be online. I'm not checking on you. And even if you see me like, oh, Kristen saw your story, <laughs> I promise you it's just to clear it out. And uh, at, like none of my friends get upset about it now. So I think verbalizing that as well, because this is this is that's how I feed myself. They understand that like my entrepreneurship is like reliant on making sure that I'm talking to my audience, not entertaining my friends. So. Okay, let's let's <laughs> dive in on that a bit. So, uh, what do you feel is the general impact of like since you're not engaging with it personally? Uh, what do you feel is the engagement of so or the impact of social media on society? And if it's negative, how can people mitigate that? If it's okay, what you engage with, the algorithm will show you more of. <laughs> 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 so if you don't like something, there's a little three bubbles. Not interested. Don't. I didn't like this post comment. Don't stare at it a billion times and try to analyze it. That's unfortunately can create um, kind of like a bias on your explore page. Okay. I definitely like to see both sides of arguments. If something's happening, I'll read it on something else. But social media has a tendency like that robot's going to give you what they think you're going to react to. It could be positive or negative. They don't care. If you're reacting to it, they're like, okay, she's reacting to it. Let's give her more. She obviously <laughs> wants to pay attention to this. Um so I think that's like the negative side of social media. If the community isn't speaking to you, you do not have to speak to that community. When people say, because I'm in fitness, right? And I used to be obese. So mm -hmm. this is something that's real. There's the, um, and if you're on either side of it, I genuinely own your community, literally. I own mine, you own yours. It's the <laughs> fat positive community, the body positive community, but the fat positive community because I am an ex-obese person. And so sometimes because Instagram and YouTube wants to create reaction. They want to keep people on the app as long as possible. It'll end up on that side of the internet. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm sorry, I'm losing my train of thought. We were talking about- So we were talking about uh, the impact of social media on society and then uh, how it feeds uh, into whatever you react with, regardless yes. of negative or positive. Yeah, so instead of reacting to anything like that, it's just like, okay, it ended up on the wrong side of the internet. Um, I'm not going to change my messaging. Mm -hmm. I'm going to stay very much like, okay, this is fine. If you entertain it, they will know that you're listening. They will think that they are making some type of statement. Mm -hmm. And on either side of the things, even my girls are like, oh, I'm gonna respond. So it's like, no, don't do that. Like literally make your own content if you disagree with me. That's what I would always say. That's what I wanted to say. If you disagree with me, Make your own reel. Make your own post. Make create some content. Don't stick in my comments. Don't don't dilly dally and fight. I want to see a reel. React to me. Let's create together. At the end of the day, because if you're going to stand for something, stand for it out loud, not just via text. And uh, people are like, that's kind of weird, isn't that feeding the hate? And I'm just like, you'd be surprised how many people actually aren't <laughs> going to. They're going to end it right there. I also like to FaceTime people that are like angry in my DMs because Instagram has the little FaceTime feature. Oh boy. <laughs> and so I'll just be like, let's talk. Like, no, like let's have a conversation because they like to dehumanize you frequently, especially if they see you post yeah. a lot and especially if they see you get a lot of love. So I'm just like, hey, if you hate me, like let's talk. Like, do you know I've who I am? I've never heard of anyone doing that before. I do it and it's funny because they'll never answer like, <laughs> you're being mean, you're bullying me. I was like, screenshots the first, like do you not see how that might I have feelings too. Yeah. Like, let's talk about our feelings together then. Like, let's do it. <laughs> and I mean, it doesn't even have to, like, I wear makeup to the gym. So there'll be girls like, you're a bad person because you wear makeup to the gym and you're making me insecure. And I was like, let's talk about why I wear makeup to the gym. And uh, they'll never, they'll, they'll automatically be like, well, because like I had to battle depression. I had to, that became a part of my routine. Now I put makeup on mm -hmm. because it's part of the my routine to, lift me up to get me going. And they're like, I yeah. have no idea. I'm going through the same thing, da, 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 da. So I just know that social media is full of people and not numbers, and which is why I've never had an issue continuing to share. So, so. that's really, like, I've, I've never heard of anyone doing that. So when, when people react negatively, you try to contact them directly. And sometimes, it sounds like sometimes you get a really positive response and sometimes mm -hmm. they just don't answer. <laughs> they, it's usually really positive at the end of the day. It's really? just people reacting 
they, they react before they understand this is a human being. Mm -hmm. I don't know their story. I only seen six seconds, seven seconds of their life. And now I'm just making these assumptions. I was like, yo, I would love to know you. Here's my podcast. Here's my actual weight loss story. Here's all the things that I've been through that made me gain the weight and why I lost the weight. Here are the reasons. Um, and, and I'm also very, very goofy online. Like I, I, you guys can see I'm a very like big personality right now. I have to act even more to entertain. My editing's really like, I don't know if you guys know of the um, YouTuber Emma Chamberlain. Um, in her original works, it was lots of cuts, cut scenes, da 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 da, shaking the screen, funny voiceovers. That's something that I did recently on Instagram because now reels are like a minute. And I'm bringing personality into the fitness space, which you usually don't see. You just like work hard every day, <laughs> eat your vegetables. If you're not like you're 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 losing life. And I'm just like, we're going to the gym. I don't want to, but let's lift, bestie. Like, and it's it's goofy and it's fun and it's silly. And I always try at the end of it just to inspire people, like just get moving, like just start. You don't want to wait until you have a health scare like me. Yeah. So yeah. How do you go about choosing a brand voice? And mm. Is that like your personal voice? Is that a different voice that you deliberately chose or it evolved into? What was that process like? I definitely realized my audience demographic first and foremost. And uh, the ones that bought the most were the college girls and college mm. girls that were goofy and college <laughs> girls that wanted to have more of a unintimidating energy in the gym. Um, I don't know how much you guys know about like the social media space on the fitness side of things, but it's very, I mean, fitness is very competitive. I mean, like people do like the bikini competitions and stuff <laughs> like that. It can be very much, it's either super strict or, I mean, you can work out if you want to, but then you don't have, then it's like lazy girl fitness, which actually gets you <laughs> nowhere. And then like they're, in my opinion, because I focus more on health, I'm like, you can't just tell these girls they can't take care of themselves. And so I'm like right in the in-between where it's like, yes, look good, show up, be your best, but like have a good time, be goofy, make faces, um, dance around, listen to fun music. And so since I saw that my audience reacted the best to that, and I also connected kind of with that audience as well, I'm like, okay, this feels like friendship, this feels like home. I'm like, I'm going to only show up for the five minutes that I'm gonna be online as that persona, even though I can be hyper analytical and they don't know that I'm like selling them. Like they don't get that. But at the end of the day, I mean, gotta get your bag. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's how I chose to show up. And I actually really enjoyed showing up that way as well. Cause to some degree, there is a persona that people maintain online on your in, in your business space, um, or if you wanted to build a personal brand. Um, I know like you're in IT, yeah. you don't want to talk about tech 24 seven, but um, like you have other things that you want to talk about. It's like, I'm not just tech, I'm I'm more. I like the cello, like anything. Like, you know, you have other passions. I do not play the cello. <laughs> I don't play the cello either. I, wish I, the I just cello. thought about the cello. You look like you could play the cello, sir. Thank you, okay, maybe I, I should know. play the cello. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> trombone back in the day. Okay, never mind. Um, but um, I try to make sure it's like, okay, when I show up on social media, again, it's that party. Like people are there to experience um, fitness and it's not about me. It's never been about me. It's for them. I'm showing up for them. I'm giving them a service and it might not be the stereotypical service. I might not be doing their nails. I might not be washing their car, <laughs> but... I'm affecting their lives. They're following me because I'm giving them something that they can't find anywhere else on the internet when they yeah. open up their phone. And so it's honestly a disservice. And I would be, I would hope that they would tell me, Kristen, what's going on? You're not talking about fitness. I would want them to be like, yo, what's going up? I, I tell them that. I'm like, if I'm ever not talking about fitness on this page, stop me because I'm, something's not turning correctly. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, that's how I see social media. And I think because of the numbers and because of the way people can treat you, if you do have a big social media following, like, oh my gosh, the amount of friendships and bridges that I had to just, I had to burn them. Because the second they saw, oh, she has 60,000 followers on Instagram. She has 124K on, da -da -da -da. she has TikTok. She has 180,000 on TikTok. Oh my gosh, she's like, so cool. We're going to invite her to everything. I'm going to be in her face 24 seven. I'm like, mm, no. <laughs> so people just respond weirdly to that? No. Yeah, they, they they freak out. They disrespect my work, my craft. I'll go in the gym and they might have like some people like, what you doing? I'm like, I'm working. 
bye. Like, <laughs> it's like you're looking here having a good time. I'm like, yes, a good time in front of my camera. Yeah. Um, it's it's kind of intimate right now. So it's a production. It's a production in public. <laughs> and so <laughs> another reason why I'm not scared to be in front of a camera, I literally carry like a bulky DSLR um, into oh, the gym every day, every single day, just to get a little bit of content, if not any. Um, that's a to-do list checklist that I follow every, even if I'm not even going to work out, it's like, if I'm going to go stretch, I got to do it in a gym setting because that converts better <laughs> than if I'm yeah. at home. Like all of those things come into mind when I'm making content and yeah. So okay. quick books for driving. Definitely. <laughs> quick books for driving. That feels <laughs> like good advice. My gym membership is definitely tax deductible. <laughs> so. Nice. Uh, do you schedule posts? Do you post on the fly, a combination? What does that look like? Um, I don't schedule posts at all. I would like to. Don't get me wrong. I would love to. But the way that my workflow is kind of going right now, it's I'll try to curate a bunch of content. I mm -hmm. wake up in the morning and see what's trending on reels, like okay. the sounds on reels that are trending. See if I can do a little acting, you know? <laughs> um, and then from there on out, I'll plan out my day from there. So I do teach in-person classes as well. And I just do like other fitness things. Like today I had an in-person class and then I recorded, posted a vlog, had to go shopping for a video that I have to film later. All these things have to come into play. I do have a schedule though. Okay. Um, building community online, having like rituals online with your followers helps a lot. Like every Monday we were all black to the gym. <laughs> like um, a Mean Girls thing? <laughs> yeah, like a Mean Girls thing. It's like oh, every single Monday we wear black. Um, and so they participate. I'll share them on my Instagram stories. It's a great time. Um, and so like there's things like that. Depending on the vertical that you're in, you'll have hashtags that you guys can mm. either create or participate in. Like on Tuesday, it's like Transformation Tuesday. So I'll share my before and after. Um on Wednesdays, maybe I'll always post like a jump rope video and it'll be like a follow along jump rope video. Um, I have my podcast. So the girls like listen to the podcast on Fridays. So it's like learning how to repurpose your content, learning how to make sure um, it's like it's literally like running a TV show, like a TV network. That's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. And um, I also have like two other businesses that I'm trying to like get on top of things with just social media um, for myself. Yeah. And you know, the second they say the second you can hire a team, do it at least one employee. And that's definitely like the next step for me in my business. So nice. So they can help at least capture content or like edit a video or two. <laughs> Take so. some work off. Your, Just off a of little bit. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Uh, so let's let's talk a bit about personal branding. OK. Uh, so if you had to give some, I guess, vertical agnostic advice uh, to people. So without like in any industry. What's the biggest thing people are doing wrong or could improve on when they're trying to build a personal brand? Um, what I see is, uh, <laughs> 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 I think people don't understand what lifestyle means. They're like, oh, it's a lifestyle Instagram. And it's the most <laughs> random stuff. It's like lifestyle is your morning routine. Okay. Um, your nighttime routine. <laughs> and your job and your family. And people will post the most random stuff and say, I'm a lifestyle Instagram. <laughs> and uh, yeah, like they didn't, they never define what the lifestyle is. Are you a travel lifestyle? Are you a, uh, um, are you a minimalist? Are you a family lifestyle? Because when you put yourself, they no, there's a lack of niching. Mm -hmm. I feel like maybe that's a better way of okay, saying it. So kind of defining your lane. Mm -hmm. And uh, although it's not, although it might not sound good or popular, like staying in your lane is the way to go for social media and for personal branding. Is that kind of what you're getting at? Yeah. It's not a lack of defining a lane, if okay. anything. Um, I also think that sometimes people go for um, shock value over a consistent brand voice. Mm -hmm. Like... There's no mission behind their Instagram. It's like, oh, they're doing a trend. I'm going to do this trend. Oh, I saw somebody else on Instagram do a, um, 
uh, of a fashion reel. So now I'm going to do a fashion reel and because it had got a million views and I own a million views. They just chase these numbers and they don't act like there's actual people behind it. Yeah. And they're confused as to why no one wants to follow them. It's like because you're all over the place. There's not even a personality behind it. You're just like jumping on things <laughs> in hopes to just get one viral video that you aren't going to continue to, you know, the 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 same topic of. So if you're going to make if a video goes viral about you getting, um, I don't know, maybe uh, you have a viral video off of like a fashion, mm -hmm. a fashion reel, right? You did a bunch of different outfits, but you want to be a doggy blogger now all of a sudden, but all <laughs> your viral videos are on fashion. To seize the opportunity, you should give up on your doggy dream. You should and make that a fashion Instagram and try again on a different Instagram. People will hold on to accounts that are obviously Instagram showing you we, this is what we think that this is and this is what we're mm. going to show people you are because they're like, but it has so many numbers and it's growing so much. This would be great for my my dog business. And I'm like, no, because it's a fashion Instagram. Yeah. So either you're going to continue that fashion Instagram or, you know, if you, every time you post dog stuff, it's not going to blow up. I mean, it's, it's just, it, don't be confused. Don't be surprised that things aren't working out when Instagram's showing you what it's going to show people on your page. And it won't reward you for off-brand content. It won't. Every single time I posted something that was not fitness related or did not show my personality because it's kind of, that's like where I niche down. It's like goofy girl fitness. So as long as I'm like doing a silly voiceover and the edits are like ridiculous, they're like, Kristen's here. I love the energy on this page. This is my favorite Instagram ever. I feel seen, right? Um, as long as it's like that, it's fine. But if I like come out of the blue with like some super, I don't know, are we talking about like Fenty? If I would like did like a Fenty shoot and I'm like in lingerie, <laughs> they're like, um, excuse me? But it's a big bag and a lot of people sell out because they're like, I want to work with Fenty X Savage. I want to do these things. It's like, I would love to. However, I did work with Victoria's Secret Pink for a year and a half for their fitness line. So it's mm. like I was wearing their workout clothes. I was not going to model their underwear. It does not make sense with my business. So, yeah. That makes sense. <sighs> mm -hmm. On a side note, I have no idea how we are on time. Can you give me a signal whenever we yeah, end up running low? <laughs> yeah, cool. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm enjoying it too. We are, we are uh, we got 36. Excellent. That's exactly what I want to hear. <laughs> Perfect. Um, yeah, so could we talk a bit about authenticity? So I know that's that's something you mentioned to me in the past. What role does authenticity play in personal and or business branding? It's everything. Like most people's businesses are based off of some aspect of their authenticity. I didn't genuinely believe. Like I'm a very hyper person. <laughs> And so fitness was like natural for me. I wasn't surprised that fitness took off out of all the things that, I, cause I'm an artist. Mm -hmm. I like to draw, I paint, I do murals, I'm good. I'm a singer. I, I can sing, I'll do this, that, and the other, but I sing soul music. My voice is very raspy, it's very slow. It's not, it's, it's I can do it, but it's not yeah. genuinely in my authenticity. Now, if I can sing like hyper pop and I'm dancing around, sure. But my genuine character is like, off the wall, kind of crazy. Just like a little goofy, a little silly. Yeah. Fitness is just kind of like, it's perfect for that. I'm a, I'm an instructor. It's like, come on, let's raise the energy. That's something I naturally do. Um, so, I mean, sometimes you have to ask yourself if you're, the business that you're building is based off of like, are you just doing it to make money mm -hmm. or are you doing it to help other people in ways that you think that you can help? Um, I've been saying that a lot lately of like money is just, comes to you because you're here to help somebody. Yeah. That's all it is. Like people are rewarding you for helping them. We're all walking each other home basically. Like this is the lot. This is the people on the planet. Let's help each other out. <laughs> um, and so I always say like to all my girls out there like, oh, I want to make content so bad. I want to I want to be Instagram famous. I want to start a YouTube channel so bad. I'm like, why? <laughs> like, why are you so <laughs> pressed to get followers? Do you know that those are human beings? You yeah. have an audience. You don't have numbers. You're not just getting a check. You have an audience that you have to entertain. <laughs> um, so as long as you think that what you're doing is valuable to the audience you're entertaining, it kind of feels second nature um, to run your business. Um, it feels second nature to be a, a fitness trainer. It just makes sense. Like I wake up at 6 a.m. bouncing off the walls. Um, 
But if I was to go into, um, I don't know, what's something I would definitely not do? Cello playing. Ch- no, you, you might actually do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if I was a cello player, like my ADHD would hate that. Because it's like I have to sit down. <laughs> yeah, the very slow strums. <laughs> and um, maybe like the traveling and the hours and stuff like that. I just couldn't do it. I like to be local. I go to my local gym and I come mm-hmm. back home. Um, so, yeah, I think that your authenticity plays a really big role. Um, especially if like on social media... No matter where you're at, Facebook, Instagram, if you wanted to start a podcast even, I feel like if you go into the podcasting space for your business, which is such a smart idea, because if you are so passionate about it, you can talk about it for hours, like you're on the right track. That's probably a great business for you. Um, You'll definitely know that if that's something that you can see yourself doing for a while. And I know some people build businesses just like to sell them, but if you can't, if you don't believe in your business enough to talk about it for 30 minutes once a week, it's gonna be kind of hard. It's gonna be kind of hard to sell it to anybody else too. So yeah, that's something. Now, if we can, if we can jump back for a second. So you mentioned earlier uh, how you can have, let's say, with the dog example that you gave, <laughs> you might start a separate <laughs> dog <laughs> dog fitness account <laughs> uh, or something like that. <laughs> dog fitness. That's a niche. Is. Um, <laughs> There's obese dogs out there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone feel free to run with that. <laughs> so that's the tagline. Yeah, the dog. <laughs> feel free to run with that. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> could you dive in a bit uh, to? I know that you have launched several different brands. Yes. Um, and I'm sure those all have slightly different voices, slightly different um, mentalities or methods behind them. Could you dive in a bit and how you split those off? Mm -hmm. from what you were doing and what that process has looked like. Yes, everything that I've split off on had like a fitness theme to it. My first ever product-based business I've ever created was a set of cards. Um, I'm from New Orleans, I'm from the West Bank of New Orleans, and I like had like some tarot interests at the time. And it was called Hit Tarot. So <laughs> it was a card deck with 72 cards. There was QR codes on each and every card. And it would be like, let the universe be your personal trainer. <laughs> and uh, you know, you would like shuffle the deck, there would be different suites, and you would pull the, your workout for the day. <laughs> on a pre-sale, I sold over 200 units in two days. Dang. So I was like, for 40 bucks, flipped a $12 deck. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> flex. Um, so that was <laughs> that was my first little business that I created. Um, so yeah, I think life gives you opportunities and then you just got to keep on going. So I had, that was like my first little entrepreneurial dibble dabble. Um, <laughs> now I have Lux Sleep. Okay. Um, and that's like luxury athlete combined um, because now I do basically I'm modeling at this point, I have to make sure I look good. Um, Like every single day I have to show up. Now I'm on like a 4K camera every day. So that's another (laughs) reason why I wear makeup because it's like, I'm entertaining a lot of people right now. I would like to show my best face forward. Um, If someone's gonna be sharing um, a reel or an Instagram um, post and a big company's representative sees it, I would want them to be like, I can see here with my product. Um, and so then I made Luxleet and that is a self-care brand for girls that lift. So it's like, you know, for the, that post-workout glow, scrub off the nasty, dirty sweat in your leggings. <laughs> um, and I like make, um, products that are like fitness themed. So I have a squat scrub, like an Epsom salt bath called Superset, um, like stuff like that, where it's like fitness terms. So there's just a lot of cool things you can do with the opportunity to niche down so finely with social um, and then I also have like my coaching programs, which is like my main source of income. Yeah. So they see the energy as like, you like my workouts? Like come work out with me then. And I have like a little app. Uh, apps are a really big thing to like, um, get your direct voice out to your audience. Um, in case Instagram doesn't show your feed or, <laughs> you know, your TikTok gets banned for a little bit. Um, and that's helped a lot. And that's called healthy by habit. And, um, yeah. I want to dive in on that a bit because I think it's it's really cool how you were able to take this audience and then uh, kind of monetize it by uh, 
kind of leading them down a marketing funnel to these courses. Could you mm -hmm. talk a bit about that process when you were like, I should make a course, what the sales process for that was like? How did how did you monetize this audience that you built up? Yes, that's a really, okay. The reason why I started monetizing it is because when I moved to Miami, I was mm -hmm. going to get my certification to be a personal trainer. Yeah. And then, yeah, all the gyms closed down. <laughs> so I was like, okay, I have this audience on Instagram. It was like 20K at the time, like 19, 20K, and that I had like a, a YouTube channel, like 100,000. And so I was just like, okay, at home workouts, everything's closed. <laughs> Come on, let's do it. Never have I ever hosted not one single class like that before. And I literally jumped out the window and built the plane on the way down. Um, figuratively, I hope. <laughs> fig figuratively, I am I still standing, never broke a bone a day in my life. Um, because I built that plane, man. <laughs> um, but yeah, I was literally, I bought a Shopify website immediately and I was just like, come on, let's do it. 14 bucks. I don't care. I just named a price. People started joining and I was like, all right, now I'm going to, I'm going to build a course. Didn't have my certification. I didn't have my certification yet. You sold yet. it first, then you built it. I love that. Yeah. I, I had no other choice. Yeah. It was like, it's either that or I'm going to be homeless. So mm -hmm. it was like, you know, when you're given enough fire under your butt, you jump. So I jump and you I flew. You jumped out the building and built a plane. I flew and built a plane. <laughs> um, so that's how I got started. And, you know, I took some breaks just to, I had enough um, of an opportunity to explore some of the other stuff. I was like, let me give music another shot. Because when I did it, I was like, what? 18. I, I wasn't 18. That was, it was in 2017. Mm -hmm. I was on American Idol in 2017. Um, I was like, let me give music another shot. Um, didn't like it. I was like, okay, fitness is definitely it. Um, and when I jumped back into it, I was like, okay, this time I'm going to do it right. I had that little bit of experience, got my certification as a personal trainer. Nice. Um, thank you so much. I got it in November. Literally it was really recently. <laughs> <laughs> well, after you've been selling lots of well, courses. After I've been doing it for like two years. <laughs> but I, I had the disclaimer. I had the legal jargons like Kristen Kelfi is not a certified personal trainer. Everything you're doing is for entertainment purposes only. Um, <laughs> not and, financial and or they, legal I, advice. Like, yeah, literally that's what I had to do. Um, but you know, now I'm able to to bring all those lessons in um, and invest in like apps and stuff like that. So that's like the next step. Um, and now that I've seen like some really big growth of Instagram, I've grown my Instagram using a Instagram strategy with reels and uh, being very interactive with stories, being very interactive with my audience. Those are real people that are following you, literally just taking in like hour a day to just click and comment and like to build loyalty. It's, it's, I love social media. I literally think about this all the time of how like my parents did not have access to talk about their business to other people, like how we have access to talk about our business every single day. Like I, I would imagine how like my father who like his business got shut down, um, unfortunately got kicked Dang. out of like a, like a, a situation. Um, it was a partnership and he got yeah. removed from it. And I was like, imagine if he could just restart there. He was like 50 at the time too. Oh, man. Imagine what would happen if he had social media back then, how quickly he could have bounced back. Um, so I think about that. I was like, okay, I need to utilize this for all it's worth. The second I get a little bit of attention, it's like, okay, let's let's get this content moving. Let's get this content rolling. That's how you do it. Literally, if you have like one viral video on TikTok, like post 10 more TikToks. <laughs> like if you get one little ounce of attention, be like, here it is. Like have like something like a reservoir ready to go. Um, let's zoom in on that for a second. Yes. So uh, a day in the life of Kristen growing her mini audiences. Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so what does that look like? Uh, like, if, how should a business owner go about, or how would you go about um, engaging with your audience? What's eighty twenty this for me? Um, basically, yes. So I'll tell you how I grew my TikTok. How about that? That's like really that's a sexy topic. Um, <sighs> TikTok thrives off of controversy. So unfortunately, you have to like bait them with a little bit of like ambiguity. <laughs> it's like something that's a little bit off like you're not telling the complete sentence the complete side of the story something that's kind of hyper opinionated but still in your industry um 
I know that's like really weird to say. You have it, it depends. Like if we, we could talk about it, I can like help you think of some saucy. Like, stuff. what's an example of something that you did? That, so what I that did was, that was kind of controversial, but that turned out well for you. Weight loss is a very controversial topic. It's very <laughs> easy to get controversial on that. Okay. So um, uh, it'll be like a before and after picture. Yeah. I have I have a couple that have like a couple million views. Like, imagine what would happen if you took your health seriously, and it would be like before and after. And people are like, oh my God, <laughs> body size has nothing to do with your health. And I'm like, all right, this has attention. And then now I'm going to show them my personality. Here's my funniness. Look at me, love me. And then I will convert literally people that would hate my guts to being like, I think I'm going to go to the gym now. And I love you so much. And your personality is so sweet. Um, sorry about that. <laughs> like literally, <laughs> it'll be like that. Um, okay. It'll be, or sometimes let's say um, I'll have a comment Whereas someone will be like, this is absolute BS. You know, they get really upset. Um, I'll take that comment and then make a, a TikTok about it being like telling my story on top of it. And now people that are seeing all the drama in the comments can actually dive deeper. And that's kind of like, I don't know if you guys like were into social media whenever blogs were a thing, but remember like the hype about backlinks to like link other things to your blog. It's just backlinks. That's all that is. And Instagram did it too. And I got rewarded heavily. I have a trending audio because I use the backlink for Instagram. They just now um, started doing that on TikTok because, you know, Instagram's the copycat app. Um, mm -hmm. They will reward you for using their new stuff. If you are an innovator on anything, they will reward you heavily. The second a new thing is out, I'm like, I'm going to use it. I'm going to overuse it. I'm going to be the first person on it. Um, and if you guys are going to hire a marketing manager, hire somebody like me. <laughs> I'm serious because a lot of people are like, I don't know. I don't want to make a mistake. If you don't try, you're going to be at the back end and then you're going to be catching up yeah so so for trend writing for you in particular mm -hmm. does that look like uh do you have some external source that you use to keep track of trends trending sounds whatnot or is that you whatever hop on instagram or tiktok first thing in the morning and you see the few things that are trending and you hop on that immediately what does that look like i usually follow people that are way bigger than me and uh, they're always is like that copying try to copy them mm -hmm. to some extent I mean, I have 60K, but that's nothing compared to somebody that has like 2 million that is trending on something. Um, never be afraid of say, of copying somebody that's bigger than you. Because if someone's being like, oh, you're copying this, that, and the other, you can respond to like, oh my God, they're my biggest inspiration. I'm so <laughs> at them. And maybe they'll share my stuff and be like, yes, they're so cool. Maybe they'll share me on their page. Um, so I'll look at that, see what's going on with people that are way bigger than me, that inspire me, that I actually connect with. Not just I'm not just jealous of them having yeah. a bunch of followers. It's like they have a bunch of followers and they kind of have the same personality as me. And I genuinely enjoy their content as well. Um, so I'll do that. Imitation is the highest form of flattery. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then akin to that, to piggyback off of yeah. that. Um, when you get big and you actually have like a following, don't get upset when your followers start to copy you verbatim because <laughs> <laughs> that, that'll that start to happen. I have a style now where it's like I'll take pictures of like grocery stores yeah. and stuff like that because I want to – that's like part of my mission to get people to shop in the produce section more. And I'll have girls that have followed me for a long time now that I'm bigger, <laughs> now that I've grown, and now they're like copying me. Like their feeds look like my feeds. And I'm like <laughs> – How does that feel? <laughs> I mean, I had to like unfollow him, but it's like, cause, cause like, cause it's like, all right, I'm seeing my stuff. I, yeah. I don't need to see more of my stuff. I need to see, I need to think four steps ahead of them now. So if that's when you know you're doing a good thing. Yes. Yeah. When people start copying you, you can't get offended. You'll be like, I'm doing something right. That's a sign that you're doing something that is attractive, mm -hmm. um, that people enjoy. Um, but there's that, but I'll look at that. And then I, because I'm so creative, I like to make my own sounds. Um, I make my own challenges. Um, so don't be afraid to try to be a trendsetter. That'll get you a lot of places. I made like my own little workout challenges through some like songs that were trending. Um, and it blew up. I got, I got a, like millions of views on this one video of me, like literally doing something in my living room, poor lighting. I really didn't think much of this video. I was like, I'll do it on my <laughs> nice camera tomorrow. Blew up when I woke up. And wow. I'm like, Oh my, and like people are doing my challenge like at this moment and like every day I'm like getting tagged like I'm doing at Healthy Kelsey's workout challenge and I'm like this is awesome this is cool um so 
if you love everything about yourself, if you love your brand and you're not afraid of people using your stuff, yeah. there has to, there's a lot of courage being on social media. I'll say that for sure. Um, but like, yeah, if you have that creative knack, use it, like be it, be obnoxious about the stuff that you love. Um, <laughs> because again, it's like, if anyone's like, all you do is talk about fitness, I'd be like, yeah. duh, it's a fitness it's channel. A fitness like, channel. What, what do you expect? Like, <laughs> yeah. So that's, that's kind of you not just imitating, but you're also riffing on these popular, these popular trends yeah. and kind of uh, adapting them a bit. Yeah, I think what I like to do, I think it's like the marketing thing in me. It's like you see that people are trying to hop on trends now. So it's like if I make a trend for my industry, then I become a leader in my industry. So and that's like the whole point, right? So it's like, all right, I mean, I have the technology. I have a computer. I have enough brain power to, you know, yeah, do it. So why not? Don't be afraid to use any talents that you have. So exactly, and you do you could uh, you do a good job riffing on it and uh, following trends. Uh, if I could dive in, uh, I th I'm sorry, I totally lost my uh, train of thought there. Uh, how do you deliver value to your audience that they're willing to pay for? Is there a key to that? I. I wish I could tell you, like, yes, it's these things. Yeah. But I think because I show up the same way every day, I do, they develop a lot of trust in me. So just kind of showing up, that consistency? Yeah, consistency. I, I sell merch, and it says consistency across the front. Um, I have very clear values. I think they all know what I stand for. And because of that, and because I don't show up any other way, yeah. and because my mission statement is very much, I want to see you be healthy too, um, they're willing to spend so much of their money, of their time. And I mean, I'm forever grateful for it, and I show them that as well. I'm just like, oh my gosh, showing your excitement when you get a new client is very, very, very important um, to keep them back. I think I forgot. It's, it's like a fact. It's like it's more expensive to get new clients yeah. than it is to maintain the ones that you have. So if I'm selling merch, if I'm holding a program, I'm extending my gratitude to them every single day. Um, I'm talking about if I hold a challenge, if I send out products like, yeah. like the consistency crew next, I will take that extra 10 second effort because I mean, I think most businesses are small businesses to be like write a handwritten thank you, add some stickers in there um, because that's going to be that person that's going to buy again. So, yeah, that's a big so maintaining your community yeah. and treating them with the respect they deserve mm -hmm. uh, over just trying to get a constant influx of new people. Yeah, it's not income, it's people that I'm I think that's when that's when when you see the numbers, that's when it gets like. Oh, I'm any. I can do all this. I'm unstoppable. I'm just all that. But it's like, oh my gosh, there's more human beings that I can interact with, people that I can get to know. Um, and I think because I treat them like humans, yeah, they treat me like a human. Like I would, if your sister started a cookie business and you don't even <laughs> like cookies, you're gonna buy so many cookies because you oh, love absolutely. her so much, yeah. right? And so I feel like it's like that. Like I feel like I make them feel as if I'm like a next door neighbor that shows up for them every day. Yeah. And so whenever I like put any program out there, they're like, oh my gosh, I'm so excited to join. I'm so excited to be even closer to you. There's even like that having a wall. Sometimes I have to like stop myself from giving too much of myself <laughs> online just so that I can monetize my energy. So. So because they know you and they trust you, mm -hmm. uh, they're willing to kind of just accept whatever you're putting out there. Even though I post it. free workouts, even though workouts are everywhere. They're yeah. like, I like your energy. I want your workouts because something about you, your personality, the authenticity that you bring to the internet is something I don't see. And I think no matter what your business is, I mean, even if I was painting, if I really tried hard, I can put my personality into it. If I wanted to make an art account, I know I would knock it out of the water knowing what it really means to be authentic online, no matter what the business is. But 
that might be something particular because I have such a strong personality. Yeah. And I wish I had more for people that are a little bit more timid and quiet. But even then, you guys see on the internet, like, the super quiet, shy girls. Like, but you know she's a super quiet, shy girl. And you could be like, That's she's still a niche. so... <laughs> it's still a niche. It's still her personality. Um, so, yeah, there's that. That's good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then I, I remember the train of thought that I lost. Uh, so... For uh, hopping on trends yes. and imitating, do you almost exclusively pull from your vertical or do you pull horizontally as well and bring stuff into your industry? Oh my God, yes. This is the best idea ever. Reddit, YouTube, Twitter, put it onto Instagram. Put stuff on YouTube onto TikTok. Put stuff from Reddit onto Instagram and make it a, 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 a graphic. It's so beneficial to find people that are in other platforms that are in the same vertical as you, you can still source them and cite them. But I mean, if you see other people copying that, it's just like, I'm just gonna put that same style of content somewhere else because then you're different while still serving your vertical. That if you ever feel like I wanna stand out on a certain platform, go to another platform and see how they do things and try to bring that kind of energy onto a whole nother platform. I am a YouTuber on Instagram. It feels like YouTube when you come on my Instagram for that one minute that you're there. And they're like, I have never seen this. You are really stretching out that one minute, Kristen. And I'm like. So you do pull from as many areas as you can to all of the different platforms. Absolutely. Cool. And it works. It work. It works on. YouTube too. If you find really good Instagram posts, like the little informational things that you might share in your Instagram story, that's a whole 10 minute YouTube video if you really wanted to, that's bullet points. So then you can monetize that. Then you're huh. gonna check from YouTube. YouTube needs <laughs> to pay my bills. I'm telling you that right now. So it's like, it's all out there. Like it is so easy to make content these days and it's so easy to get inspired. You really, there's nothing new under the sun. It's literally just putting your own spin on it these yeah. days, so. It, so it's time for a lightning round. Lightning. Yeah. So. I feel like it's been lightning the whole entire time. <laughs> yeah, uh, so those are just some questions that I like to ask to everyone, because okay. it's fine. Uh, so a book you've been reading recently or reading right now? Um, uh, I am rereading The Way of Integrity by Martha Beck. Nice. It's very, very nice. Podcast you're a fan of? Uh, if you're into podcasts. Real AF by Andy Frisella. Could you say that again? I totally... Real AF by oh, okay, Andy nice. Frisella. <laughs> I also like um, Ed Milet's podcast, Max Out. Nice. Uh, and then a short message that you could share with the world right now. A short message? If it's from you, not your brand. Share with the world? No. It's <laughs> yeah. the same thing, let's be honest. <laughs> um... A short message. <sighs> Don't let the outside world change you. Period. <laughs> Stay yourself. Stay yourself regardless if other people don't like it. Nice. Yeah. All right. So I think that concludes our conversation. Uh, let's have a round of applause for Chris. Yeah.